don't know about you, but I still remember the days when Leo Messi came on as a substitute for Barcelona, making his first steps in that beautiful kit, playing alongside the likes of Ronaldinho. That was the period where I looked at Barca and I loved every single game whenever i could i was watching their matches and i was in awe of ronaldinho specifically he was one of the main reasons as to why i'm so much in love with football before we go any deeper into this though let me know who is that one player for you that made you fall in love with football in the comments down below tell me right now but as we speak we have Barca in the third position on 41 points, seven points behind the likes of Girona, having scored 10 less goals. Girona is just pure firepower up top. You can see that the likes of Tikankov, Savio, Dovdik, Alex Garcia, all these guys are getting involved. But with Barcelona, there is clearly an issue when it comes to goal scoring at the moment. And multiple other aspects like the financial situation the restrictions in the transfer market are not necessarily giving barcelona fans a nice outlook into the future there's more talk about players possibly leaving for good amounts of money to fix and balance their cash situation than actual amazing players joining barcelona so what we are going to be doing today is we're going to keep that financial restriction side of the game on our minds, try and work with the team that we have initially, and maybe make a few minuscule signings here and there. But most importantly, build an FC Barcelona squad that can not only go ahead and win the Champions League as the ultimate goal, no. I want to win the treble with this team. One season, multiple trophies. That's when Barcelona is going to be fully back. So let's start this journey and also... Let's try and bring in a couple of players that make us think about the good old days, the likes of Ronaldinho and such. I personally have watched a bunch of games of Barca this season, and I have to say, as a Bayern fan, it's just horrible to see what has happened with Lewandowski. Look, I understand he has become old, but in 19 games, he has managed to get 8 goals and 4 assists. The numbers don't look too bad, right? You have 12 goal contributions in 19 matches. But generally speaking, it feels like he misses so many big chances. And sometimes it just feels like he just isn't where he's supposed to be. His old striker instincts don't seem to be there. Am I wrong, Barca fans? Let me know what you think, because I've seen it on social media too. So many people are complaining about Lewandowski and are possibly looking for further into the future of who should be taking over that position. Obviously, Haaland and stuff is just dream talk. That's not going to happen with the financial situation. But there is something to be talked about with that position. And Lewandowski is someone that doesn't need money. The guy is absolutely filthy rich away from football. So I don't think he's one of those candidates that is going to go to Saudi. So maybe there's no Saudi money coming in for a team like Barca selling him. So that's another thing you got to keep in mind. Because the whole Saudi thing is definitely a thing that somehow saves multiple clubs like Liverpool. They bought Fabinho and Henderson all of a sudden for decent amounts of money. And Liverpool was able to go out and buy a whole new midfield. So I don't really see that happening with Lewandowski because he doesn't need the money. And I don't think he sees an attraction over there. Uh, but when it comes to players that I personally truly believe in, I like Rafinha a lot. I really, really do. I think he's an amazing player. I feel like sometimes he's a bit misunderstood in, in terms of like what he does on the pitch. But... For me personally, Rafinha fits in into Barca really nicely. Uh, Joao Vilis did look good at times this season, but it seems like he's fallen out of the starting 11 again. Ferran Torres is slowly sneaking in a lot more. And uh, yeah, they are apparently not going to be going ahead and buying him uh, long term because he's only on loan. De Jong clearly has been linked to multiple clubs, mainly Manchester United previously. Gundogan, I'm still surprised that Manchester City let him go because he's still performing on a very high level for Barcelona, in my opinion. This one, I will never understand. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes, he might have been cheap and everything, but Romeo, just this guy should never have been part of Barcelona at this stage of his career. I saw him play for Girona last year. I always thought like he was always late to tackles just giving away fouls for fun and it just didn't fit when i heard of this transfer i thought what what you can't be like that poor there's no way Barca can't afford better players but i guess it is like that then you have kunde who i love Cancelo, who i think is incredible i think moving forward this guy is still 
one of the best fullbacks in world football, has had a little bit of disrespect towards his uh, coming his way because of possibly some of the things happening behind the scenes and in the media when it comes to him. But yeah, uh, then you have Martinez here, who has done a good job previously for the likes of Athletic Bilbao, but he's 32. Valde is obviously a massive talent. And then you have the likes of Pedri, Gavi, Araujo. So Araujo already linked to the likes of Bayern Munich. Apparently Bayern Munich desperately want to sign him. I understand why they want to do that. He's one of the best center backs in world football, and he's going to be that for a very, very long time. But apparently he wants to stick around. He wants to be the captain of Barcelona moving forward. So you look at the rest of the team and you kind of realize, OK, so De Jong should probably drop into the CDM position and then you'll have Pedri in there. Gavi's probably only going to be playing once Gundogan, his reign in this club, uh, possibly ends at some point. And Ferran Torres looks to be the one to play on the left wing. So looking at this squad and then also the reserves, I do think there is a lot still to work on. I don't think this is the Barcelona team that, or a Barcelona team you should be scared of at the moment. But they clearly do have a couple of world-class players in there just feels like a few things here and there just don't match up so this is the team that i'm gonna i'm gonna play with initially and then later on we'll be making decisions based on how well we are doing how far we get into in champions league football we'll go ahead and start spending money and starting that rebuild properly but initially because of the financial situation i'm not going to be making any massive moves unless i sell a player for a lot of money so my first season as a coach of barca has come to an end and they have won the league 98 points which i find extremely impressive only two losses in this first season and real madrid in fourth but keep in mind real madrid have what feels like 20 of the best talents in world football so they are only going to be getting stronger unless they sell some of these guys on. So we have to be aware of that. Now, that's not the only thing we did well in. In the Supercopa, we won against Real Madrid. In the Copa de España, we were not part of the final. So we couldn't win the important one, the Copa del Rey. It didn't happen. And in the, what is, what is it called? Europa League, which we took part in, we beat AC Milan in the final. So you would think, oh, things are going really well for you. Well, sadly, we will have to let go of a couple of players. Uh, let's go into the starting 11 first. Lewandowski, next season, I'm selling him. I initially wanted to sell him in the uh, early start of this season, but I'm going to let him go. Now, clearly, he probably has tons of goals for us and assists as well, which we're going to take a look into later. But he's old. He's 35. So we're going to let him go and bring in possibly the next man for Barcelona to focus on. Now, what is incredible is that Ferran Torres has blown up to an 87. I love that. I am personally a big believer of Ferran Torres. I like him a lot. I think he's an amazing football player. And I just feel like he has never been able to really get that consistent play time, that coach that trusts in him completely to hopefully... We can work with him for multiple years to come. Rafinha up to an 85. Gundogan has, I believe, dropped to an 85. I think he was an 86. So that's another one that we're going to potentially move on. But luckily, we do have Gavi. So that is not necessarily an issue. But as I was saying before, some players are going to leave. Cancelo is going to go. His loan is going to expire. He's now 30 years old. So we're going to let him actually leave. Lewandowski will go. Felix will go. Romeo will go for me. Gundogan is also going to be leaving. And Christensen has also requested a transfer. So plenty of things are going to be changing going into the next season. But we fully are going to be starting to give this team a new face. So let's take a look into the stats before we go into that season and go crazy. Rafinha, 30 and 6. Ferran Torres, 28 and 12. And then Lewandowski actually didn't even outperform those two. I mean, if that doesn't tell you the guy needs to go, I mean, he's gone. 22 and 4, not good enough. Even Gundogan has 22 goals from center midfield. Yeah, he's done. But a new face of Barca coming soon. Let's start making our first transfers. But keep in mind, we cannot buy the best of the best. We have to try and make some good deals. I was just going through some transfer dealings and realized that Pablo Gavi has gone ahead and requested a transfer. Yes, cannot block the bids for him. And that is probably because Gundogan was taking away his playtime. But we built up Gavi so he can take over now. So I'm hoping that we don't actually have to sell him on. 
I'm going to sell Gundogan and then he's going to play a full season. And hopefully by the end of the season, he's going to say, yep, I'm open to renegotiating my contract. But the issue is, if he keeps growing at 190 million release clause, it's going to be easy for some teams to trigger. So we got to be very careful. If he goes to 88, 89... That's not a good look. You can say that again. That's not a good look. Right above me, 167 million in transfer revenue has now come into the club. And I'll show you guys how all of that has happened. So we have let go of Lewandowski to, yes, Real Madrid. I have let him go to Real because I think he's going to be trash for him. So I'm just going to go ahead and weaken their team. You can get a 35-year-old Lewandowski. I don't mind. Uh, in before they actually win the league title ahead of us because I just sold them the top scorer. Uh, but Christensen has left for 56.9 million to Atletico Madrid. He had requested a transfer. He's gone. Gundogan, who in my opinion is going to play at Barca for not just this year and the next one. I think he might actually be playing there for the next like two, three years. He has that quality in him. Uh, but we are letting him go because we need to bring in money into this club to be able to make transfers so i'm gonna go ahead and do the whole net spend transfer thing so the amount that we brought in by selling these players that's the amount i get to now go ahead and spend in order to fix the striker position and also the right back position don't get me wrong Serginho dest has actually been doing quite well for the likes of psv eindhoven playing as a right back and left back but for me that's not the one because at Barca, he could improve himself. So I'm going to be moving him on and making a decision for that position too. So striker and right back, those are the key positions to begin with. For me personally, there are not many right backs that are offensively as good as a Joao Cancelo can be. But this one clearly has shown his qualities this season. He might not have a real face, which is an absolute disgrace. And that rhymed. <laughs> but Pedro Porro is the man that I'm bringing into the club because he has been incredible for Spurs. So after a year of, at Spurs, he's now joining Barcelona. He's a Spanish lad that used to play at Girona at one point. I've actually looked into it. I was looking through the teams he played for. He played for Rayo Vallecanos on the 19s. Then he played for Girona. Then he played for Manchester City. Was loaned out multiple times to different clubs. And obviously Sporting being the main one. And now it's at uh, Tottenham. He's doing such an incredible job that he deserves that spot, in my opinion. And it's someone that has longevity as well. He comes in at the age of 24. He can be here for a very, very long time. And I feel like he would fit in perfectly into the style of play at Barcelona. So I think this is the ideal right back that Barca could be getting in the future. But obviously right now, because he's playing so well in the Prem, he's going to cost a lot of money. And he cost us... 50 million. I might have found the perfect player for Barcelona because Newcastle United have admitted that they may have to sell one of their star players, such as Alexander Isak, Sven Botman, Bruno Guimaraes, because of Premier League's profit and sustainability rules. Well, that is coming in quite handy because Alexander Isak is a player that is tall that is great in front of goal, that still has lots of room to grow and could, in my opinion, still turn out to be one of the best strikers in world football. If he's not already in like the top 25, I'd be surprised. For me personally, he is. I love the way he plays. And it is someone that already has La Liga experience. He used to play at Real Sociedad, if I'm not mistaken. He used to play off the left. He used to play in a striking position. So this guy knows the league. And now he returns. Alexander Isak. Coming in for 80 million. We have spent 130 million after bringing in 164, I believe. And that is a great transfer window, if you ask me. And the good thing is, with a bunch of these players now returning from their loan deals, I mean, we have the likes of Pablo Torre coming back from Girona. We have Ansu Fati, who is now back from uh, the likes of Brighton as well, Araujo from Las Palmas, I believe. It's really nice that we're able to stack up the bench with some decent players despite selling so many. So now the big question is, is this it? Is this everything that we can do with this Barcelona team? Or will there be issues in the future? Will some of these players actually leave? De Jong being linked with a move away for quite some time now. Pedri... I don't see leaving. I would be absolutely shocked if Pedri leaves at some point. Gavi, I can't see go. De Jong, I can't see go. Kunde, possibly, not necessarily, but Araujo is wanted by so many clubs. 
And with the financial situation of Barcelona, we have to think about these things as well. Like maybe one of these top players that every single Barcelona fan loves might have to go. And that's something that will change things up for us in further seasons. But for now, we have our team together. And sadly, things have not worked out. Gavi, his request for a transfer, his contract just wouldn't be extended. He now has joined Liverpool for 190 million. And that is exactly the thing I was mentioning just a second ago. So that means we have to bring in a new center midfielder into this team. The formation is going to stay the same. Or am I just going to move? Oops, sorry. Am I just going to move De Jong here and then actually bring in a CDM? Now, this CDM has to be someone that can be good on a ball. I cannot have another Romeo 2.0 in here. Otherwise, Barca fans are going to go crazy. So I need to find the perfect player for that spot. Someone that knows how to take the ball from defense and move it into more attacking positions with perfection. Xavi is known for wanting one player, and that is Zubi Mendy. And that is the player he is getting right now. This man has been linked to Barcelona so many times and has been linked to multiple other clubs. And after this season, if Zubi Mendy still plays for Real Sociedad, I'd be shocked. I mean, it is insane to see how many clubs are apparently desperately wanting to sign him because he's the next big CDM, the next Rodri, so to say. And for that reason, we're going to sign him. 45 million. Yes, Gavi left for a lot of money, but this one is a good one for us. Subi Mendy, cheap compared to Gavi, plays CDM. He knows how to pass a ball how to take the ball from defense and move it on to the uh, to the number eights in the team and possibly to the wingers as well. So for me, this one was just an easy one. He had to come in. He doesn't have an insanely high rating like the rest of the team, but I do think he's going to do a great job in here and he's going to fit right in. Now here we are at the end of the season and we are seeing that the team has made it to the Champions League final. So there is the opportunity of a treble. But the question is, has the team done it? In La Liga, first position, 102 points. We have scored 91, while Real Madrid have scored 86 with Lewandowski part of their squad, which means we could be there already. Supercopa, we lost against Real Madrid on penalties. Copa de España, if we won this, that means we have the treble ahead of us. But we didn't. Real Madrid have won it, which means there's no chance for a treble, but there is a Champions League final to be played. And we're going to watch it play out right in front of us now against Manchester City. Now, we have a couple of red cards, it seems like, which sucks. But we have won the Champions League on penalties. Barcelona has done it, which now means we get a boatload of cash. We already sold Gavi for 190 and only spent like 50 on Zubi Mendy. Now we have won the Champions League. Barcelona now gets to spend money the way they used to, which means I can now go ahead and fulfill my dreams of going ahead and bringing in players that basically resemble the likes of Ronaldinho and other legends that I absolutely loved watching back in the day when Barca were peaking in their incredible style of play. I was thinking about which player to bring in to represent Ronaldinho, and I already saw the best one would have been Vinicius Jr. I mean, he's the one that does all the skills, but then realized there's one more Brazilian, and that Brazilian is Gabriel Martinelli. He is joining us to play on that left wing. He's coming in at an 87 rating, which means Ferran Torres Sorry, buddy. I'm trying to recreate a bit of the old Barca. You have to go. Back when I used to watch Barca, it was one man that I loved to see run towards the goal. Thierry Henry. So we had to bring in a Frenchie and it is going to be Nkunku based on his performances at Leipzig. Not the ones at Chelsea yet because the man has been mostly injured from what I can tell. But Nkunku is such an incredible player. I loved him in the Bundesliga despite him playing for Leipzig. He's going to be joining us right now as well. And we're just spending money for fun. Now, the question is, where does he play? Because I do have Martinelli and Rafinha, who basically represent Ronaldinho, right? So we had to combine two Brazilians to make up for one Ronaldinho. And then I am assuming Isak can be dropped too, okay? So we can take off Isak. 
We can put in Nkunku. We will be selling the likes of Isak and Torres. Thank you for your service. I mean, we can keep Isak actually as a backup because we do need a striker. Fed on Torres, I'm going to sell. I'm going to make old loads of money for that. And then I'm probably going to go for yet another transfer. And then we will go ahead and see if we can go ahead and win that treble. Look, if there's one man to come in and replace the likes of Messi in this squad, it has to be someone that is Argentine. It has to be someone that has gone ahead and played with him during the World Cup and won the World Cup with him. It is Julian Alvarez. Now, Rafinha, I'm sorry. Yes, we needed two Brazilians to make up for one Ronaldinho. But at the end of the day, I couldn't go ahead and have a Barcelona team without an insane player on that right wing that is going to be our very own Messi. So, we have Thierry Henry. We have uh, uh, right there, Thierry. We have uh, uh, Ronaldinho. We are bringing in the likes of Julian Alvarez to imitate Lionel Messi, and again, it's basically impossible to replace these players with any of the ones that are here right now. But we're just trying to have some fun while building this team. And yes, I'm fully aware that I'm downgrading in certain positions, but I don't care. Our team is nuts. It doesn't, it's fine. Like 85 is not that much of a downgrade. We should be okay. And uh, I was just thinking like, is there any other position I can do this with? And I just can't come up with one. I'm really struggling. So let's see if I can actually find one more or if we're just going to go through the season now. I got it. Puyol. So Spanish center back is walking through the door. It is Pau Torres, of course. I mean, there's basically no one else that you can bring in that could fit into this team with the rating and everything. He doesn't have the luscious hair of Puyol, which is a big letdown. But man, Puyol was such a good player. He was such a leader, man. So incredible to watch. I absolutely loved Every single time, seeing him just chasing people down, putting in tackles, never giving up. And that's the type of player I want to have in this team. So a left-footed centre-back, Paul Torres, used to play at Villarreal. Now at Aston Villa, very, very successful. Now he's going to be playing alongside Araujo. You know what? I am going to give away the captaincy to Araujo. He should be long-term the captain of this team, or Pedri, of course. But all right, I think I'm done bringing in players uh, resembling old ones. Now, let's see what we can do with this squad. Can we actually win the treble? This season has ended, and guys, it's been ridiculous. Yes, bringing in those players that need to resemble the likes that were here at Barca before. Let's take a look at this team that we have built and the ratings. Martinelli, 89. Nkunku and Alvarez, the same. As soon as I changed Alvarez into a right wing, he went from 85 to 87, then kept growing. De Jong and Pedri holding down that midfield with ridiculous stats. Zubimendi now up to an 88. Pau Torres, not that much growth. I think only a plus one. But defensively, Araujo is leading the line with his rating. The captain is doing well. And Testigan, by the way, 34 years old now. Still looking ridiculous there with the stats. And our bench has Isak going up to an 89 due to his great performance last season. Ansu Fati up to an 87. The guy is just coming off the bench constantly. Pablo Torre gone up. Or what is his name again? Pablo Torre? Pau Torre? No, not Pau Torre. That's Pau Torres, the center back. Pablo Torre, I believe. Uh, we have him here. We have Test. We have Araujo, Garcia, Peña. Uh, Garcia currently out on loan at Girona. Let's see what happens with that one. And I also had Ra Rafinha here. Oh, I couldn't get rid of him. I completely forgot. I tried to sell him, but I guess he won't be playing in any of the finals here. We do have the Champions League final, which means there is one trophy on the line already. But let's take a look at La Liga. We have won it. 20 point gap to Real Madrid, the way it needed to be. Supercoppa. That makes it two trophies. League, Supercoppa, and Copa del Rey is another one. Okay, so we do have the chance of going ahead and winning the treble. We have already won th uh, three trophies, if you include the Supercoppa one. Supercoppa, were we part of this? Yes, we were. That's another one. Okay, so that makes it four trophies already. We can actually go ahead and win five. That is ridiculous. Is there anything else that we took part in? No, no. The International Cup is not part of it. Five freaking trophies. That's all of it is on the line. I wanted a treble. I'm getting something much bigger right here. One of the best seasons ever. Xavi, Mbappe, Dembele, Kukju, Sergei, Milinkovic, Savic. Back in European football. 
Ugarte, Robertson, Minjay, Marquinhos, Cancelo, Donnarumma. Oh my god, that team is ridiculous. That is going to be a tough one to compete against. But luckily, we do have some amazing players of our own. And I do think they're going to do a great job. So let's make sure we do one thing, though. And that is the addition of Rafinha onto the bench. Because why not? We could make use of him. And see if this team is capable of beating that ridiculous PSG side to win five trophies. Oh, these kits are different. I should have picked the original Barca kits. But then again, they do kind of look nice, you know. I didn't... I don't recognize these kits for some reason. Is this like the third kit? Or am I just... I don't know. Maybe I'm just old. Who knows? Anyways, let's go ahead and beat this PSG team if we can. And most importantly, do a little bit of tiki-taka because that is in the DNA of Barcelona. So good passing play is going to be key on this one. Oh, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is he so fast? Covering the passing lanes. Worked to perfection. Got the ball first time. Didn't get it the second. But Ter Stegen did. Come on. Araujo steps up. Doesn't win it off of Mbappe, but others do. If Araujo fails, others will do well. That's been the situation. And there goes the Tiki Taka symbol. Yes, Julian Alvarez is press proven. He runs down the wing like Messi used to. Cuts in with a simple skill move like Messi used to as well. And then it's Pedri. Let's go. A simple body feint down the right hand side. Cutting in. Beautiful passing play. This is what Barca is about. Everyone has an eye for their teammate. They make it look so simple. Watch this. Beautiful through ball. And Kunku should have scored that. Oof. Love that. Love that. Lads, this is working well. Porro into Pedri. No, that's not Pedri. Here is now Pedri. Oh, look at this. This is sensational. You gotta score that. Araujo is such a beast. Honestly, if Puyol saw his playstyle right here, right now in this game, he'd be a proud man. Oh, run, run. It's Kukju down the wing. He has good passing. So we cannot allow him to do exactly what he wants. And we need to step in with others. Mbappe is tough to, spot, uh, to stop. I would have loved to bring him in as the Henri replacement but my god he's expensive and insane wow that was a good run of psg but we are still in the lead or are we are we actually no we're not one one it is barcelona sadly conceding xavi simmons the dutchman scores i'm so excited about his career man i'm looking forward to seeing what xavi simmons is going to do after the loan spell at uh, Leipzig, where he has been incredible, by the way. Oh, no. Not again. Bro, Mbappe again causing trouble in this defense. They are taking the upper hand now in this game. Alde. Love that. Beautifully played. Look at this. This is ridiculous. 2-1. Ha! <laughs> the passing play once again. The key to success for a beautiful squad of players that know exactly how to play with each other, where their teammates are at any point, and just need one touch football to make things happen. Now, I would like to go ahead and play some insane through balls like Xavi and Iniesta used to do, and even Messi. But my God, penetrating defenses on ultimate difficulty with through balls. If it's not a lobbed through ball, it's so hard for me. But here goes Zubimendi. He's just sprinting through. Zubimendi has had enough being a number six. He just wanted his own goal. Wait, no. No way. Beautiful. We intercepted that. Incredibly. Testagan, you're so good. I don't know where he pulls those saves off, man. Even in real life. Like the stuff that he does. People like him and Alisson. It always make, always make me wonder, like, how did you pull that off? This is not good. Mbappe inside the box. 90 plus one now. 90 plus two. Kick it away, please. Thank you. What a turn that is. We will take it. Five trophies in one season. Can you believe it? Well, you have to believe it because we are about to lift the trophy. What a rebuild this has been. It has been so much fun. I feel like we had two different teams, you know. 
Maybe I need to do this more often, like halfway through my rebuild, just completely change the team. But sometimes people get upset when I change the team after building a strong one because they already feel kind of attached to the players that we have. But nonetheless, guys, this was a lot of fun. I would love to see Barcelona get stronger and stronger because I'm pretty sure Real Madrid is going to get very strong moving forward. And I want Barcelona to be able to compete. I want El Clasico to be a thing again. And it feels like it. Now, I have a lot more interest in El Clasico than I did two, three years ago. So I really love that fact. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Take care and peace.